I love how people try to point out my shortcomings in my head. You know, my shortcomings. Anyway, they were talking about these holes and how they weren't capped and I've probably got problems already from the birds building nests and stuff in there. There's no, there's dirt from, you know, the talc and whatever they have had. But I'm gonna show you what was in there and I pulled them out all but one. Thankfully, I didn't pull them all out, but see that there's a cup. It's just a styrofoam cup. That's what they stick in there and it's from Casey's. So somebody went and got some soda or sweet tea or whatever. Same thing. They're all, they're clean. They're clear guys. It's okay. It's okay. I, I'm on it. Those cups were all in there when I bought the machine and I took two of them out. One had fallen out in transit. Yeah. Um, one had fallen out in transit, but whatever. It's fine. We all know. We all know that one lonely farmer is a dumbass, right? That's, that's how that works. And I've already got problems. <laughs> oh, you guys crack my ass up. I do believe there's supposed to be a screen or something here on this blower. Um, but yeah, I have to, to deal with that. Anyway, I'm going to go right on back to work here. Uh, my wife is doing a wonderful job. She is, she watched me. I did this one here by myself. This one here. Then yesterday we started on this one and Teresa started to tear this one apart by watching what I was doing and this one here me and her worked on and she has completely tore this one down all by herself. So that's what, you know, husband and wife team, that's what we are, husband and wife team. She is not afraid to get her hands dirty. Uh, she is a wonderful individual. And I just love it when people, you know, um, put her down because of her nationality or her ethnicity. Um, but you know what? Let me tell you something. There ain't a, there ain't a better woman on the internet or in my life than this one. Uh, she's great. <laughs> Gonna do a how-to and why video. All right, so if you've got a 7200 John Deere, doesn't matter whether it's a four row, six row, eight row, 16 row, 12 row, 24 row, however many rows they put on these crazy things. I think 24 row is the largest for the 7200, but don't quote me, it could have been bigger. Uh, you have these, this type of a closing wheel assembly. Closing wheel arms are the bushing style. And let me get one of these bushings here. Here's bushing one. All right, so what happens with these things? is they wear now if it was you can see it right here the wear on that Ooh, let me straighten out you see that wear let me see if i can do it that way you can just see the wear on those they're pretty worn they go here that's the new style so what happens when they wear they just turn into a total disaster as to closing you can't if these things are wobbling around, and I'm telling you, there's an inch of play at the very back, which, you know, equates to quite a bit of movement down here at the closing. Wheel side of it. Oh, wow. That bearing's history. Ugh. I'll have to replace that. Um, well, these tires are all getting replaced anyway because I'm not, I'm doing no till. It's not conventional till. So, they have a repair kit for this. And um, I've got it over here. Got it over here. Let me walk back over here. Throw that on the ground there. So this is this one here is almost prepped, ready to go. I've prepped it. I've taken the paint off because there's a little bit of welding involved. Just a little bit of welding. This is Copperhead Ag RK Products. This is the shoop number for this. There's a very self-explanatory little uh, doodad here. Hey, you want to hold this camera while I do this? Yeah, so we're gonna we're going to uh, we're going to do the uh, how to and why. That's what we're up to. So what you do is you clean that off, and there is and there are there are instructions to this, and they read to use a C clamp to hold the uh, thing in place. Well, I got news for you, the C clamp don't work very well because I've tried it. Well, let me get my guts out of here while we're doing this. And 
this is what replaces it are these two bearings. These are like pilot bearings for a John Deere. Hmm. It's not, but they're about the same outer diameter. Um, but the inside diameter is like, I don't know, half inch. So what you do is I've made up a little jig here. It's just a little, a little, uh, yeah, threaded, <laughs> threaded rod. Come on around this side here. So, yeah, jig. Never heard of it called a jig? Mm. So Concussion. Concoction. Contraption. Concoction. Not concoction. You like concoct anything. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I didn't say anything. It's a concoction. <laughs> Contraption. <laughs> so just don't mind my wife. She knows not what she does. <laughs> So anyways, the best way to do this that i found is with this jig is to go ahead, slide your bearings in, all right? Not, you, you, you gotta be careful because these bearings will get hot when you weld and you just don't really want too much heat on them. So you take that and your C-clamp would, you would not be able to get it on there and still be able to weld. It just isn't gonna work out that way. So with these things, <clears throat> Give me the camera here for a second. With these things, they wear to the back side of the uh, closing wheel arm on both sides. And you can see there's probably a eighth of an inch of wear on each side. So by the time you take an eighth of an inch here and transfer it all the way back to here, that's quite a distance. It's going to be moving side to side. So when you want to put these things together, you put your jig like I've got and you pull it as far forward as you can just like that so that seats the bearing to the front of your your uh, closing wheel arm and then the magic starts you got to weld so i'm not going to have teresa film me welding but i'm going to go ahead and weld it you put an inch of weld on the top and the bottom of each side you don't have to go all the way around there's not that much force on there because the bearing well, just because it doesn't need it. There's not that much force on it, and your weld isn't going to break. This is very thin stuff, but in the instructions, along with this, they tell you that that's what you do. So I'm going to shut up, I'm going to weld it, and Teresa can come back when I'm done, right, dear? Yep. Okay. You want to catch me welding? Like All right, that. here, here, here. Let me, get, let me get my welding helmet on, and here, I, yeah. Come a little so bit closer. The next thing you do, still recording? Yes, dear. Good. Ow, it's hot. So the next thing you do is you yell and scream because you're burning yourself. You take the bearings out because you don't want them to get hot. They're not super hot. They're warm, but they're not super hot. But if I had left that on there, buddy, you'd be cooking bearings. We don't want to cook bearings. So you kind of got to be quick. And if you cook the seals in that thing, I don't care who you are, they're junk. What happened if the welding failed? The bearings will fall out? No, they just flop around even worse. Oh, but okay. those, they're not gonna, if the bearing fails, then you just take it off and put a new bearing in. They're, they're very common bearings. I think they're used in the grain drill. Okay. So now what you do, because I got this done, you pull that out, and I'll put this guy like this, right? Because it's welded on that side, I really don't have to be too concerned with it, with it doing too much to it. And that's it. Now I'm going to put the weld on the top side of it, which you don't need to watch because it's just redundancy. But you can watch if you want. Using these little, one of these 
three thirty seconds, I think. Sixty thirteens. Great welding rod. You don't have to get fancy. You don't have to go out and get your super duper old school fluxed welding rods. Yeah, there's a reason they went to the modern fluxes. Because the old shit was good, but it was very toxic to yourself. Get your two cobalt, 613, 330 seconds, or B54, or whatever the hell this welding rod is, and life is good. What happened to this? It's a turtle. Yeah, where's the turtle? Died? Of course it died. But died? It's dead. No, no, he's still alive in there. No. He's only been there for 30 years. 30 years? Has at it been least. that long? Yeah, at least 30 years. I would say so. At least 30 years. I have a wrench here so I don't burn myself, but I seem to manage to do it every freaking time. And just set that aside. Now, now that you're done, let it cool off. which I'm not doing it very well, good job of. <coughs> you let it cool off and we will get back to putting it on there. I'm gonna put a coat of spray paint on it. Um, then I'm gonna get paint all over me like that because, you know, that's what we do around here. It's OLF Farms, right? OLF Farm? Yes. Yeah, Pandy Farm LLC, mm -hmm. All right? There we go. Okay, so Teresa's been working diligently. What do we need to put on here yet? Uh, gauge wheels, gauge wheels. I think she could do this whole thing herself if you... I don't. This is so, so hard. That thing is difficult. This, this, where the hell is that thing? What's the thing? The thing. This one. These is hard to do. Oh, to take those these, out. These, that. Yeah, these somebody paid some good money for these things. I think this is a Shoop edition. I would never use those, honestly, because they rust the bottom. Didn't you use that one in the 12 row class? Mm, I took them all off. Oh. I got all brand new ones. I put the same V slicers on like I've got here. Oh. You like? I like the V slicers at the bottom. The V slicers stick out the bottom and you can see them there. So that trench is completely clean. Completely clean before that seed ever drops down in there, right? Yep. Now, well, anyway, it's just us here today. Um, let's say we get those things on here and uh, that'll be that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So foggy. Yeah, I guess. I've lost some weight since I got back from the Philippines. All that chlorine I ate. Gotta love chlorine. Chlorine is great for your gut. So I would not make a very good city person. No. Fluoride and chlorine is not my thing. Okay, so like I said, you're gonna get paint all over yourself if you don't have patience, which I don't have today. And did you see how easy that went on? That was hard to get it off though. Oh, it was a mother and a yeah, mama. Anyway, so let me get all this stuff out from under my ball sack here. Uh, anyway. You ever struggle with a plastic bag? Of course. We all have. No, they suck. Sometimes they do. This one here, I have to cut it open because they heat seal it. So the instructions to these are here. They're in every single package. If you want to read them, you can, but I'm not into it right now. All right, so you take the bolt, you put a washer on the bottom side. It's not doing a very good job of filming. Put your bearing on. One, two, three, four. And then you set it aside. So you got room for the next one. These things are optional. You do not have to use those. What are those? Just spacers. You don't have to use them. They're optional in this application. They're optional because they're just optional. So it's four on the back side, one on the nut, the bolt side. Then you take this thing here and you raise it up, all right? And you set that on top like so. And get your hand on there, and then you force that guy in. Get that paint on you. Because, you know, you gotta have, I'm worth more now. I got green paint on me. <laughs> right? So then, the kit does not come with nuts. Oh, what did the boy do? Is it the big one? 
Oh, well, they're not big. They're just they're nuts. Oh, I don't know where they put the nuts in. All right, shut the camera off while I go and search. Oh, he's got one here. Like a good squirrel, we found our nuts. Right? Anyway, so you got to reuse the nuts. We do not supply nuts with these. Where the hell do you put the nuts on? Oh, okay, I see. They go on the back side. Start the nuts. Once you get the nuts started, you're fine. Um, well, these things, it could be... They can be a real pain in the ass, but they're not generally too bad. <sighs> Just make sure we're turning that the right direction. You know, this is a job that if I was fat, I couldn't do. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Come on. want to pull down on that nut as you go because if you don't there is a slot in there and that slot if you don't pull down it will change the angle of your closing wheel and you'll have problems it's the closing wheel problems what the hell are you doing thing That's that. So, all that slop that was in there, gone. I really like these things. So, we'll see how they work once we get into the field. But, uh, of course, I'm going to be changing all this over to the uh, farm shop closing wheels. You maintain the hub, but you take the tire, you take the tire and the bearing out you put the new closing wheel right onto those plastic uh, wheels and put a new bearing in and you should be good for thousands of acres hopefully thousands of acres so there it is that is how you do it and why we do it is for better closing of the furrow because if you don't have a well closed furrow you have poor emergence you can have a suicide sprout in an air pocket Suicide sprout, huh? Yeah, they sprout and then they dry out and die. Suicide. Suicide germination. So it'll sprout because there's moisture, but then if you get into a dry spell and there's nothing but a pocket of air, they, they just all sprout. And if they do sprout and take root, which that's very rare, but if they do sprout and take root, they're going to be four or five days behind the ones around them. And then they're a weed and they never produce anything ever, anyway. So with, the, with proper closing wheels, crushing that sidewall, collapsing that sidewall, and firming it against that seed allows good, even emergence. That's why I've got the Kenna Metal V Slicer. That's why I've got heat and seed firmers. And that's why, I, because that will put the seed all at the equal depth at the bottom of the trench. And that's the farm shop closing wheels or furrow cruisers, if I can't get the farm shop ones, or the copperhead furrow cruisers, that's what I'm gonna go for. Uh, the reason I'm going for those is because we're planting into green material and they will not wrap or they're, they're they're less likely to wrap up so that's why I'm doing that so good seed placement followed by a good closing system there are better closing wheel systems I think uh, Yetter or Yield 360 has a really nice one that's got discs that actually cut and then firm and then pinch it closed oh wow so it's like a three-stage deal which great but when you're planting green then you need more down pressure and it's just how much down pressure can i put on these things you know i just don't know I so anyways see. that's why we do it that's how we do it and i hope you enjoyed this little segment and it's not so boring watching me and teresa tear one of these things apart and put it back together again because it's redundant redundant and my knees are sore. <laughs> right right all right, so these row units are all done, these nine. Oh, this is an exhausting job. Well, they're not all done. I still have to get my closing wheels dealt with. But all the 
all the rebuilds are on this one here we just not quite finished with I have to well I got to put the spring kit up there and uh, yeah the spring kits got to go up down pressure springs has got to go there and I got to fix this floppy son of a bitch here this is what you can see when, when they're loose like that nothing they're just totally freaking roached out and you take this guy here and you drop that one and you can't move it at all that's pretty slick huh anyway so if you've got one of those it's rk products i think i've i well you'll see it in the video <laughs> and i think i made a video yeah i made a video <coughs> all new new chains new springs new disc openers new down seed tubes new keaton seed firmers new yeah, everything that needs to be replaced is replaced, and I'm greasing it. The guy that owned this before, he took good care of it, but I think, I don't think he greased the um, closing wheels on the last three days of planting. It just, they were a bastard to get off. Now, I know grease gets hard over time. Um, there is grease. You can see that, he, that the man greased them, but you're not... They, they were really hard to get off of there. Uh, these were actually pretty well seized up on there. But we'll be all right. We'll get that job done. It's just my heater doing this cooling thing. Uh, yeah, so tomorrow we'll finish the back. That'll be the five in the back. And then I think I got three more days of work on just the rebuilding these. Uh, the bushings on the parallel arms, I thought they were bad, but they had... They must have been replaced at some point because they're not bad. But you also have to understand that this was not a no-till corn planter. This was a conventional till corn planter, so there, there's not as much pressure on those bushings as what there would have been if it were used as a no-till corn planter. But it's a no-till now. And we'll see how the year goes, if it works out really good. And next year I feel that there's too much play in them. I'll just replace all the parallel arms, uppers and lowers, and life will be good. But anyways there goes another day one light two light there we go